What the heck is that? This past weekend, the city of Boston unveiled its tribute to Martin Luther King Jr. and his wife, Coretta Scott King, with a massive $10 million bronze statue entitled The Embrace. Now, the concept, you should know, was innocent enough. Indeed, endearing. Its aim was to depict the moment MLK and his wife embraced after he found out that he won the Nobel Peace Prize. And when you scale the photograph of the embrace to overlap the sculpture, you can actually see it. But what the artist obviously didn't see is how absent that larger image, the sculpture comes across as very, very odd. Many have called it, frankly, phallic. From some angles, it appears that the hands are holding a colon or a giant turd, as thousands of Twitter users have complained. So whatever the concept was that the artist was after, it failed from a technical as well as conceptual vantage point. But more than that, the statue comes across as simply ugly. Some have even called it utterly grotesque. The Babylon Bee took a step further. They set up a satirical crowdfunding site to help finish the job, to help fund the completion of the statue. In other words, God, where's the head? Where's the body? This can't be it. Many on Twitter complained that what they really needed to do was actually just cover the monument back up. It was better the way that way. Now, some are trying, of course, of course, to blame all this criticism and mockery on racism. But as it turns out, even members of King's family have voiced their outrage over the epic artistic fail. Coretta Scott King's cousin, Seneca Scott, published a piece absolutely obliterating the statue entitled, I kid you not, a masturbatory homage to my family, saying that the statue looks more like hands holding private parts than it does a special moment shared by two people. What's going on here? Well, what's imperative for us to understand is that art simply ain't what it used to be. Historically, beauty was considered inextricably linked to the formation, the cultivation of our loves, so that we would learn to love rightly. Up until the beginning of last century, the cosmic values of truth, goodness, and beauty were made known to us most explicitly in and through beauty. From Plato onward, beauty wasn't a mere sentiment. It wasn't a personal opinion. It wasn't merely subjective. Beauty was an eternal value that existed outside of us and all around us. Beauty was the radiance, the delightfulness, the delectableness of the true and the good, which awakened within us an eros or a desire for the true and the good. Historically, beauty is literally a physics. This is why we associate beauty with attraction. Beauty serves as a gravitational pull that draws our loves and desires toward the true and the good so that we can learn to love what's truly lovely and desire what's truly desirable and hence experience our highest human flourishing. This was the purpose of the artist. Artists were under a moral obligation to reveal to humanity the true, the good, and the beautiful so as to awaken our loves and desires and draw us into eternal and divine life and thus realize humanity's highest flourishing and aspirations. Those days, thanks to the rise of the secular modern age, those days are largely gone. They've been replaced with a completely subjective view of art. Art is whatever you want it to be. In fact, there's even the belligerent polemic, who the hell are you to define art? And so in the place of the historic civilizational building vision of art, art has gone woke. It's now in the service of politics and not just any politics but particularly what's called emancipatory politics. Emancipatory politics is a globalist inspired idea that re-envisions the state as a grand liberator of people groups who are considered to have been otherwise disenfranchised in the political process. So what emancipatory politics does is it views societies and races and genders in light of power discrepancies, where dominant identity or culture that's usually designated as white and male disenfranchises and discriminates against minority identities and cultures. And the key here is that this is forever the permanent state of society unless or until cultural Marxist liberals come to power. So emancipatory politics is a Marxist political idea that re-envisions the state as a grand liberator of individuals from traditions and customs, including artistic traditions and customs that are now deemed oppressive 
and discriminatory. And thus, the whole point of art today in service to this emancipatory vision is to liberate populations from precisely the kind of world that traditional art and culture helped shape. That is why so much art today looks so horrifically and embarrassingly hideous. It's meant to. It's rebelling against the world of truth, goodness, and beauty precisely because that world has now been recast as racist, sexist, and phobic. But there's some very, very good news on this front. Traditional approaches to art are making a massive comeback big time all over the world. You're going to absolutely love it. You're not going to want to miss it. But first, click on that link below and protect yourself and your loved ones from these insane cultural Marxists by protecting your assets with the timeless value of gold and silver. As you know, patriots all over the centuries have always relied on gold and silver to protect their assets during economic storms. And that is where the amazing patriots over at Gold Co. come in. If you have $50,000 or more in an IRA, 401k, or savings account, you need to protect those assets from all of this economic insanity with the timeless value of gold and silver. Click on that link below and talk to our good friends over at Gold Co. They're patriots just like us, and they want you to succeed so much that you're, they are offering up to $10,000 in free silver if you open up an account with them. But that is a limited time offer, so don't wait. Click on that link below or visit my special website, TurleyTalksLikesGold.com. One of the places where traditional art is making a massive comeback is in the nation of Hungary. The nationalist populist Hungarian government, led by the one and only Viktor Orban, has been busy enacting reforms throughout the nation with the aim of rooting out any trace of globalist Marxist leftism and implementing a robust nationalist, populist, and traditionalist agenda for generations to come. And central to these series of reforms is the revitalization of the arts, and particularly theater in Hungary. Hungary's government spends more on culture and the arts than almost any other nation in Europe in terms of its gross domestic product. Recently, the government announced that they're setting up a national cultural council headed by a government minister with the task of setting priorities and directions to be followed in Hungarian culture. In addition, Hungary is seeing a renaissance of classical architecture building projects, all in an effort to reawaken precisely that traditional vision of art which served as a mediator to awaken our loves and direct them to the eternal source of truth, goodness, and beauty. And it's absolutely an astonishing project, but we're seeing it being replicated throughout the world, particularly in places like Russia and India. Both are rebuilding, or where art and building projects are returning to traditionalist roots. Unfortunately for us, we were reminded this woke weekend how long we have to go before we too return to our historic roots. But don't despair. Woke art entails its own demise. A far more beautiful future is at hand. As always, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. You'll definitely want to check out my latest video on what the January 6th videotape release will show. You're going to absolutely love it and not want to miss it. So make sure to click on that link and I will see you over there. God bless.